Welcome to Michael Reads from a Book, Episode 17, the series in which I read from a series of books. Today's entry is one near and dear to my heart, Legend of the Shadow Warriors. This is a book in the fighting fantasy series, which is sort of half D&D, half Choose Your Own Adventure, and I own 54 of the 59 original run series. And that's probably the geekiest thing about me that you will ever find. Now, I'm going to jump into the first choice for this one. So the backstory is basically that you play this soldier for hire. That is, you used to be a soldier, you're retired, now you're a general mercenary, and you've been employed by this peasant group in order to defend them from this other group called the Shadow Warriors. Entry 1. Though he is relieved that you have agreed to help his village, Mendokin now begins to look embarrassed. He says, we are only a poor and simple people. All we can pay you is 200 gold pieces, and what is more, the village elders have decreed that you are to be paid after the job is done. Hi-ho, such are the times. Still, you won't go back on your word, and so you agree to his terms, and Mendokin smiles once more in relief. Now he must go and find his friends so they can prepare to leave for Karnstein. You yourself will have to buy provisions and other equipment necessary for the journey and your adventure. You shake hands with Mendokin and arrange to meet his party on the main trade route, south of the city in two hours' time. The farmer then hurries out of the tavern, just as a godly dressed fellow stro strolls in and elbows his way towards you. This is Bartolf, an infamous gambler. He struts through even the most dangerous part of the city wearing expensive silks, a sign of his recent success at countless ga gaming tables. I haven't seen you in here for so some time, he says with a sly grin. Care to test your luck? Although you shouldn't be wasting any time here, a win would enable you to buy more equipment and thus prepare you for the road ahead. If you accept Bartholf's challenge, turn to 86. If you would rather leave, turn to 30. Here's the picture. I colored it in because I was going through a thing. It was a long time ago. Never mind. I'm going to accept his challenge. 86. Rubbing his well-manicured hands in unrestrained glee. Bartolf sits beside you and hands you a die. Put some gold on the table. Well, as a stake, he says, and roll the dice. If you roll four or above, you win. You keep your stake money, and you take an amount equal to your stake from my own purse. If I roll less than a four, you lose, and I keep your stake. Easy, eh? Yes, you think. Almost too easy. A small crowd, drowned by the exaggerated loudness of Bartolf's voice, gathers round to watch. Decide how many gold pieces you wish to gamble, and note the amount on your adventure sheet. Roll one die. On a roll of four to six, turn to fifty-four. On a roll of one to three, turn to forty-three. I don't actually have any dice, so we're going to say I rolled a 5. Why not? Your smile turns over to a look of mute disbelief as the dice suddenly flips over. Your roll has become a 1. Too bad, said Bartolf, reaching for your gold. The die he gave you is obviously loaded, and he is a trickster! If you want to grab his wrist and accuse him of cheating, turn to 115. However, if you would rather avoid any trouble and let him have the money, Deduct the gold pieces you have lost from your adventure sheet and leave the tavern. Turn to page 30. Now, I wouldn't be very much an adventurer if I let myself get cheated by a trickster, now would I? So we go to 1115. Test your luck. If you are lucky, turn to 222. If you are unlucky, turn to 140. I'm going to assume I'm lucky because, again, why not? What? A cheat? How dare you! Despite the pain caused by your tight grips on his puny wrist, Bartolf is still able to put on a show of affected outrage that seems a little too well practiced. When you pick up the die and roll one seven times in a row, the onlookers make it quite clear that they like cheats even less than they like bad losers. They grab Bartolf and prepare to drag him into the backyard. Before the rogue disappears altogether, you search him for any gold you have already lost to him. In addition, you take six gold pieces belonging to him. Satisfied that justice is about to be done, you close your ear to Bartolf's whining and leave the tavern, taking his die with you. Add the gold pieces and a loaded die to your adventure sheet, and turn to page 30. 
Leaving the tavern behind, you walk towards the sprawling market area in the, in the central city of the city. Ironically, the market stands next to Royal Lendl's poorest district, a warren of dilapidated buildings housing beggars and thieves. All in all, a sad and dangerous place. The sort of things you would normally cap the sort of things you want would normally cost you a small fortune. Luckily you have a good many merchant friends who sell you their wares for next to nothing. The eastern side of the market is where you'll find the hardware you may need, weapons, basic equipment, and so on. On the western side, more unusual items are to be found. Which side will you visit first, the eastern or the western? Nothing says exciting like a shopping trip. I'm going to go to the unusual items. It does not take you long to find most of the things which may be of use to you during your adventure. Look at the list opposite, and if you buy any of the items described here, add it to your adventure sheet deducting the appropriate number of gold pieces. Accept the provisions and the amulet of luck, which may be used at any time except during a battle, and the ring of agility, which may be used whenever you test your skill, you may only use the items when instructed to do so by the text. Further, unless the list tells you otherwise, you may only buy one of each item. So we've got a whole list here. The amulet of luck. You may use this talisman only once, after which it is useless. Using it restores your luck to its initial level. Cost, four gold pieces. Chameleon Cloak. Woven by elven craftsmen, this fine cape takes on the hue of any natural background. It is not so effective against man-made backgrounds such as brick walls, and works best in the hours of darkness. Cost, three gold pieces. Firecrackers. Thrown at a hard surface, these tiny magical devices explode with a loud noise and a blinding flash of light. Though harmless, they can frighten or shock opponents. You may buy any number of them, two gold pieces each. And there's a bunch of other items on here. The mirror, provisions, ring of agility, sleeping drought. Drought, probably drought. And the adventure goes on from there. Shadow Warriors turn out to be a bigger deal than they are. There's a lot of horror-themed villains. It's one of the better game books. If game books are a thing that you do, which is for me. Anyway, that's this week's reading. We have uh, 53 other gaming books to go after, so that's a fodder for a lot of episodes. See you next time.